Uh, let's talk to J uh, Jasmine. Jasmine is a fellow Canadian and she wants to talk about uh, faith healing and religious practices. Uh, right. Wants to know if we have kept any of, or I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you tell us, Jasmine. Well, yeah, uh, basically I just wanted to know, especially from people who come out of the very he uh, heavily charismatic um, religions that, uh, don't you miss that after you, each of you converted? Not yes at all. No. <laughs> yes and no for me. Probably based on our experiences, it would depend. Um, yeah. Don't I miss it? No, I don't miss it even the slightest because no. I, I, I mean, this is going to be just based very, very subjectively on my own experience. I had a health condition and that um, the faith healing stuff was used against me constantly. And it became such a, such an annoying part of my life being prayed over and um, such a, a source of shame for me uh, because of the idea that if you're not getting healed, that there's something that in your own, you know, your, your own heart of why you're not being healed. Um, I've shared before that one time I was accused of having demo like a demon uh, because I had this health condition. So it really messed with my head. And I moved away from the charismatic movements, like charismatic denomination in my twenties. And so I actually got away from that. And I think that's one of the only reasons I stayed in Christianity longer was because I found a, a church that didn't do that because I recognized early on, even though I didn't um, assess my own, like my faith system, I recognized early on that faith healing was absolutely like an abusive practice. So I don't miss it, not even the, in a little bit. Although I have said, I do wish witchcraft was true, but I see those things are, as very different because <laughs> that's something that I would be doing on, like just for fun on my own. But I'll let you answer, Chris. You said a little bit yes and no. Yeah, and actually as you were talking, I, maybe I'm changing my answer to just completely no because the reason I said yes as well as no, no for all the reasons you said. Yes, my original answer was yes. Was I thought I was missing like the connection that's happening, like being in a group of people who are all focusing on the same objective, like there's something emotionally like nice about that. I don't know if nice is quite the right word, but there's like a, it's the community thing. Um, but then as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? But I get that from like volunteering, cleaning up the river. And um, I get that from, I get that from being on set, filming a commercial. We all are focused on the same thing, working towards a goal. And that gives me that feeling. So no, I don't miss that at all. Because like Aaron said, that was a super traumatic place for me to be. And um, a really abusive place as well. Yeah. How do you feel about it, uh, Jasmine? Are you, well, do you currently hold, hold, a, hold that belief? Or are you a Christian? Or where are you at with this? Uh, um, well, I guess you would call me a best loose theist, maybe a deist. But okay. um, how would you, uh, do you both believe faith feeling has no uh, place? And if it doesn't, why not? And if it does, how can we adapt it for atheists? I, I, I believe that it has no place, no place in, in medical treatment at all. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a pretty hard line in the sand there. I think there's no evidence, absolutely none, that it does anything. Um, and in fact, there's been studies shown that prayer and things like faith healing can have a detrimental effect on someone's uh, on the outcome of you know recovery from something like that. Um, so I, I think that there's there's no place for it. If you want to talk about how we can build like community and like I think that if I were to talk about anything that maybe is lacking in maybe the like, you know, the secular community is, is like how people would maybe gather around somebody who is having like a health issue. Um, I think that it's much more beneficial to bring someone a casserole than it is to go pray for them. I agree. I would say, no, there is no place for it. Um, I Not that I would say. I say, no, there is no place <laughs> for it. And I think the place where we can take it for atheists um, and everybody is psychedelic therapeutics and uh, placebo effect. Like there's already so much that our brain can do on its own without needing to pray. We just need the we just need the research behind it and the evidence. And we already have some of that building up in the psychedelic world, as well as, you know, the placebo effect. Like right. people are people are healing themselves with uh, just yeah. a little sugar pill. So it's like and know. there's I mean, and there's there's empirical evidence to show that kind of thing, right? Like I, yeah. I know that so I, I've had several different kind of surgeries and like one of the first things they tell me to do is get up and start walking around because 
when you start working towards this healing process, when you're psychologically there, you actually do get better faster. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that if we were to pour more research and, and work on that, I think there's lots of progress that can be made um, if we want to, you know, have some more control over our health, I guess. Because I think that that's kind of ultimately what the um, the goal is in faith healing is it's it's when you're sick or if you have something like that, it's it's you're, it's a shitty situation. You're out of control um, and you'd like to gain some control over it. So yeah. I think that um, looking into other ways like that that are that are not externally based necessarily, like where you're asking for some arbitrary thing to happen, um, you know, to fix it, where we're looking more about like what are some actual pragmatic ways that we can go ahead and 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 you know, increase healing or that kind of thing. And, and there are a lot of options outside of just like straight therapeutic things like, you know, like painkillers. <laughs> there are things that have been shown to work in different kind of pain studies and that sort of thing. But yeah. Yeah. How, what do you think, Jasmine? I feel like we both just well, went I, on you. <laughs> I, work with, sorry. Um, I work with a lot of older people and they tend to be you know, heavily religious and they're not going to uh, change their worldviews, whatever, anytime soon. Am I doing a, a disservice if I engage them in their faith practices? Like if you were to let somebody pray for you, is that what no. you mean? Or just you know, like indulging them while they talk or about it? So they like want to, yeah, more indulging them while they talk about it. I mean, I'm not very versed on the Bible, but if they want to talk about the Bible, just I don't know, go into Psalms or something. I think that that's up to you, Jasmine. I don't think it's doing a service or a disservice. It's literally just what you would like to do with your relationship in, with them and what they want to do. Like people are going to believe what they believe. And if you would like to enter in a dialogue with someone, then you can ask them if they want to do the same and go from there and just share your thoughts. Whereas it's not up to you um, whether or not... Um, you know, them talking about what they believe and you just letting them talk about it is a disservice. I think that's putting too much um, power in your hands over their scenario. Like, because that sort of implies that it would be a service because you would help them get out of their belief. And that's not your responsibility. You're, you're there being their friend, being in their community. Um, so I think that that's sort of the wrong question, I guess, is what I, mm. is what I think. I think I, I, I largely agree with you, Chris. Um, I say with the only caveat that I would put in there was that when you see somebody who is maybe actively harming themselves. Um, yeah. So we like we know that there are beliefs that are widely held um, that are a religious belief where somebody is going to maybe neglect proper treatment. Um, I think that that is a situation where you may want to like step in and maybe question somebody based on, you know, this what they're doing. Um, but I mean, these are relational issues. So there's never gonna be a yes or no black or white answer to it. So it's always gonna be up to your discretion. And like Chris said, just like um, kind of where, where you're wanting to go with that and what is the goal in that relationship. If it's somebody that you are really close with that you feel like you can have an open conversation with that they're not just gonna you know, get defensive and turn away and you see them doing active harm towards themselves or someone that they are in care of, I think that that is a time where you might wanna step in. If it is somebody who is if you have an older, older, older generation or, um, and it's just more of just like this personal practice that they have and it gives them some hope, meaning and purpose. Like I, I know other people have different opinions on this. Um, I would just kind of let it be <laughs> personally, but ultimately yeah. there's there, you're always going to have nuance and it's going to be have something that you have to kind of work through on, on your own. Um, but maybe just a few caveats, like I said. Yeah. What do you think about yeah, that? Jasmine? Last question I have well, yeah, I can see that your point. I can certainly see your point. Um, the last question I, I have is, uh, given that, again, that you guys came from very charismatic, experiential kind of uh, religious backgrounds, what do you replace those experiential, transcendent um, needs, I guess, maybe you guys might have, if you have? I'm sorry. Well, sure. I'll, I'll like I think I, I understood but, the question. Yeah. Like yeah. I, what if I replaced my experiential, like the, right. yeah, like the charismatic emotional side of church experiences. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I'm still involved with like ritual and that is part of how I have stayed involved um, with that kind of experiential thing. But I also think that um, once I got out of the mindset of thinking that there was a, a, another world outside of our own, like a spiritual world or some dimension that 
is existing that we should be able to access or something. Um, once I stopped thinking that and started just viewing the world that we are in with our bodies as the experience that we're having that I should focus on, suddenly like being with my friends or being with my partner or just watching a TV show, like I started to feel that way about a lot of things. Not all the time. Life is still complex and hard and whatever, but like those things were able to come in the experiential, like emotional whatever was able to come in um, it, more easily and like dancing at a wedding. Like I'm thinking of when I uh, consumed some, some things <laughs> and was dancing at a wedding. Um, and I had one of those moments just feeling like this feels so unreal right now and so amazing. And it was even more than anything church could ever give me because there was still something I could never access with Christianity. I could never access God except through what I was experiencing. So I always felt like since I couldn't confirm it one way or another, there was always a missing piece there. Um, and even though those times were super emotionally high and, and even, um, you know, like something that you might miss, I have gained more benefit and more value from not believing that there's something else happening and just believing that this is it. I'm, I am fully experiencing this event right now. I am fully experiencing my life because it is mine. It's my body and it's my experience. Nobody else is. It's my solitism. But that's, that's my take on it. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna like I'm very similar to like what you were talking about. Um, I, I I definitely felt like well I'll just say when I first left Christianity I relied heavily on meditation because I think that um, for me it was like my part of my routine or ritual if we're gonna go with that um, kind of that framework for today. I don't know how many times I said framework today. Uh, um, I, I spent a lot of time uh, doing meditation, doing mindfulness. I would do guided meditation often because I felt like I really needed someone to lead me, almost like how I, you know, um, like I relied on my pastor to lead me in in church. Um, I did a lot of guided meditation, and then I did a lot of, of other kind of mindful um stuff like that. I did that a lot. And I think that that did get me through a lot of like, there's like this detox period that I had where I, um, like when you, when you realize that like, there's nobody listening on the other side, or when you come to that, you know, that belief, um, there is, there's a, there's a bit of a withdrawal almost. And so I find that, um, meditation is a really great kind of replacement for that. And, um, I mean, like Chris had touched on, like music is like incredibly powerful. I, I spend a lot of time listening to music and just really like embrace, like just really getting into the whole thing. Like I used to be a bass player. I used to be on the worship team. I love nothing more than like, like cranking up my music and like lying on the floor and just like feeling the vibrations in my body and just really soaking it all in. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Before, before COVID uh, going to concerts, like one of my mm -hmm. huge experiences coming out of Christianity was going to one of my favorite bands and just having like, uh, like a completely like unreal experience there and realizing that like that had nothing to do with Christianity, that had nothing to do with God. Um, and it also came with this perk of having like no shame because <laughs> I was just like enjoying myself with music. So I think there are a lot of things that we can call replacement, but really it's just like normal human stuff. Um, and it's just like things that all humans should like maybe just find, you know, what part of their self care and what they do to like feel good. It's these are these, you know, serotonin things and, and dopamine, <laughs> dopamine uppers, like these things all just work as a, as a part of like your ongoing, you know, your daily routines. Um, so once you kind of move farther away from it, it less, it becomes less of like, oh, I'm trying to replace this old routine I had and just more of like, oh, this is just part of living. You just like go for a walk in nature and you're just there and you, I, I mean, I know I'm, I'm just going to assume that Chris gets this too. Um, when you kind of go through some of the work too, like, and you're able to just be there um, and you understand more about just soaking in the experience. Um, that's, that's a, it's, it's, it's a healing process in itself. We don't need faith healing. You just go for a walk in the woods and just enjoy yeah. it. Like this stuff is yeah. really uh, overlooked as far as like yeah. li living, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck yeah, I agree. Yeah, go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> Witchcraft is cool, and go for a walk if you can. So, um, 
I don't know. Same thing they've always been telling you. Get outside. <laughs> <laughs> if, safely. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like all these caveats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that, Jasmine? Uh, well, that's, that's, a, uh, that's definitely a good way to look at it. I think we if you're definitely coming from, like, the atheistic uh, perspective, yes. Yeah. Um, that's all my questions. I enjoyed the show. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thanks, well, Jasmine. Yeah, thank you so much for calling in.